Okay, we are recording. Uh, thanks for coming. So we first on the agenda, we have the minutes from the May 13th board meeting. Does anybody have any questions, comments, additions, deletions, subtractions, what have you? Okay, then the minutes will stand as written. That brings us to the abstract review, clerk treasurer's report. Do we require a motion? I don't have it in front of me. You do need budget modifications, please. Okay. Somebody, one of you two want to make that motion. I move budget modifications. We have a motion. Second. Thank you, sir. Uh, do we have any discussion? Then we'll call a vote. Bob. Yes. Danielle. Yes. Sorry, my I phone vote. went out. <laughs> it's okay. I vote yes as well. So we'll start with the general fund. Any questions or comments about general? Was that a no? Oh yeah, that was a no, sorry. That's okay, I couldn't tell, I couldn't tell. You good with general, Bob? Yeah. Okay, we'll move on to water. I'm good. Any questions or comments about water? I'm good. So we'll move on to sewer. This did include the mixer in there. That's why the sewer was so out of, that's coming out of the reserves. Okay. I'm good. Any other questions or comments about sewer? Nope. Okay, then we'll move on. I think there's trust and agency in there. Any questions or comments about that? Nope. Okay, and then it's library, just informational. Is there anything else? I don't have it right in front of me at this second. Okay, and if we'd like to pay these bills, we'll need a motion in a second. Move it. Second. Have a motion, have a second. Any discussion? All right, we will call the vote. Bob? Yes. Danielle? Yes. And I vote yes as well. Thank you. Uh, that brings us to a resolution for the COVID-19 containment measure, which is the measure itself, which um, you know covers our employees salaries who are out of work because of uh, one of the governor's executive orders and so on. So as drafted and in what is being uh, you know, up for consideration by the board, this would end June 7th, which is a Sunday. Uh, and we would bring Sandy back to work specifically um, and have everything really back in, in flow with our staff that Monday. And you'd bring so we, and you'd bring back the public work so you're back to 100% staffing then too. Yeah. So yeah. And, no, it's okay. And then, um, you know, there we sent out our required New York State reopening plan. Uh, Linda sent it out via attachment. It's not something that gets reviewed by the state. It is something that we 
have to just submit and say this is our plan. Uh, it all boils down to a few, you know, essential things that for those of us who have been working through this have become regular way of way of life, which is you know social distancing, wearing masks, disinfecting surfaces, and uh, the way. You know, there's, some, there's certain things about the reopening that are out of control, such as the access of the public, which Triangle will decide when they will reopen the building. But our plan for you know, our initial phase here for the office itself is to bring Sandy back and be up to 100% on staffing here, but to do all of our business with residents and, and so on through our window. Uh, that would be our, our initial phase. And then, um, you know, depending on governor's orders from there and what, what Triangle decides to do with the building, um, you know, we would adjust accordingly. That's the back outside window, not the inside window. Yes. Yeah. Sorry. Thank you for pointing that out. Not a problem. The new station alert has arrived. <laughs> Sorry. All right. <laughs> Does anybody have any thoughts or questions? No, it's fine. Do we need a motion? Yeah, I, a just look, I looked over it. I don't really have any. Okay, yeah, thoughts. we would need a motion for the passage of the containment resolution. Move it. Second. We have a motion and a second. Do we have any discussion? We'll call the vote. Bob? Yes. Danielle? Yes. And I vote yes as well. I know Sandy's eagerly anticipating getting back to work. So. <laughs> uh, that brings us to a ratification of the just, vacation. Just, just one second, sorry. Um, the, she did help with, she did the tax bills. Mike Decker was nice and yeah. brought them up to us. Um, she came in, she got, picked them up, she stuffed the envelopes. So they're ready to go out in the mail on Friday. So she has done some of that stuff. She did the water bills that way. She did the taxes too. So, but she is eager to get back. Sorry. That's okay. Um, that brings us to the uh, ratification of the vacation and personal time payout. That Linda sent an email about there's uh, employees that have existing vacation or personal time that they could not use because of you know COVID nineteen and whether they were essential and were required to work or you know, we're staying at home. Uh, there was some email discussion and the, the, you know, the decision that is being asked for ratification is uh, granting each employee an option of being paid out that time or carrying it over. So we would need the board. What, for, this that? For, for what ends this Friday? For yeah. this fiscal year, yes. Right. And our goal is to talk about what we should do and put in place for, for going forward. To modify the policy when we review our policies to, to adjust that for vacation, like we did with sick time. Just want to make sure. Yep, no, we're all in the same. My feeble brain is in the right pie. No, you're in the right same spot. Okay. And, um, you know, it, it, it's totally up. It's whatever our policy you know, whatever we decide, but you know, I, I know like at my, and this can be our policy or it cannot be at my, my employer is you, you use it or you lose it. But you know, under in a year like this, obviously the board would, you know, be free to make an exception because obviously there were uncontrollable circumstances here. So we don't need to do anything with the policy itself tonight. Right. But, I mean, for example, Sandy was planning to go to Florida for, for a week to see her grandkids. I was going to go off to vacation to Washington to my brothers. I mean, they were planning, but COVID-19 changed everybody's plans, unfortunately. Sorry. That's right. So, it, it, yeah, I mean, it's two things. We need to ratify that decision for the staff to get that done by the end of the fiscal year. And then if, if you know, either Bob or Danielle does have thoughts on, you know, that policy right now we're free to discuss. Well, I'm, I'm pleased to make a motion to ratify 
the uh, vacation and personal time payout policy for this year. Um, I'd rather talk about the policy going forward when more than just my friend, good friend and colleague, Danielle and I are the only two here. <laughs> okay. I wholeheartedly agree with Bob on that. So would okay. that be a second? Hmm. That would be a second. <laughs> All right, so we have a motion, we have a second. Do we have any discussion? We'll call the vote, Bob. Yes. Danielle. Yes. I vote yes as well. Thank you all. Thank you. Um, next. Yeah, you, I, I can't imagine taking away your vacation time just because <laughs> it ended. Like, sorry, COVID, no vacation for you anymore. It, it's been an unusual year for everybody, you know, fortunately. It has. Um, so next up is a what's called a breach notification policy. I can let Linda talk about this a little bit, but in a nutshell, it's a policy that I believe the comptroller's office is, you know, basically says we, we should and have to have it in place. Coffin and Gerhardt provided us with a template that they use for all of their uh, clients that just pertains to security and, and data breaches and establishing some type of, of protocol. So Linda, I don't know if you want to yeah, I mean, basically, I, I uh, attended one of the comptroller's webinars that they had on the required policies and procedures that we have to have. And this one, which I didn't know we had to have before, we have to have. So I asked, I reached out to Nate, he provided it to me. It's basically covering us if we have some kind of a breach in credit card payments or something like that. So it's all that it is. So with that said, we'll open the floor for discussion. Well, if it's got to be, it's got to be. <laughs> That's what I was thinking. <laughs> Do we have a choice? I, wise, wise words. I think I need to let you move that, Danielle. I will move that, Bob. Right. And I'll second it. I just don't want to do them all, you know. Um, you're pretty good at it. You don't want to hold a record for the most motions made by a trustee in village history. And, and in five minutes. Yeah. Thanks to Nate for providing us with the template of what we need. Um, that would help. So is there any discussion? And we'll call the vote. Bob? Yes. Danielle? Yes. I vote yes as well. Thank you. And then this next one is uh, kind of a culmination of a lot of discussions. Um, but you know, after we've been doing these water reliefs one by one for a long time, and uh, Nate and I were were talking about them, have been talking about them for a while. And you know, a few of us have always mentioned it would be really nice if we could put some type of policy in place kind of make this simpler and more streamlined. And Nate, Nate said, you know, I, I think you can actually do that. So Nate was uh, kind enough to put together a policy for us to consider. So um, you have that policy in front of you, which lays out, I, I, if I'm remembering correctly off the top of my head, four different types of properties with different per, uh, percentages, which I, plugged in there based on my own personal just recommendations and, and starting point. Um, so basically how this would work if it was adopted as is, it would kind of become a function of the clerk to be formalized by the board. So if somebody submitted a water relief request, uh, you know, the clerk treasurer could look at that request and then plug basically what type of property it is based on our policy into this basically a formula that was laid out, come up with the amount of relief beforehand, and then during the meeting, uh, the board could just look at them, review the proof of repair, and say yes, no. It would create consistency across the board with the way they're all handled, which is something we've always wanted to uh, ensure and achieve. Um, and that's really this, the scope of the policy. I believe it does, you know, it does most of the things that we've always looked to achieve with our water relief requests. And the only other thing that I can think of that was in there is I believe it does say, uh, you know, only one relief can be granted in a, I think it's 
done by quarters, if I remember correctly, like in, in, in eight quarters to a to a property. Or, you know, and didn't years. I see that it said, I'm trying to find it now because I'm looking at it again. It has a dollar amount that will go to as well. Did I see that somewhere? I thought I saw Like that. a max? Yeah, I thought there was like a max, but maybe I read that wrong. I don't recall a maximum dollar amount of forgiveness available other other than the maximum amount to be forgiven is um 80 percent yeah i plug yeah should that was the only thing i thought i saw it. that's the only thing just because that one was like out of control like <laughs> you mean like, like as far as dollar value how close to my heart this whole thing is this makes my heart sing happy words um <laughs> And most of it is really, like, I'm really excited about the whole thing. Like, I liked it all. And I thought that I read somewhere, maybe it was because it says it has to be at least 180% of the average charges. So it just has to be an, an excess of their bills. Right. Um, and but I feel like there should be, like, a dollar amount that we won't excess because if we're giving 80% and somebody has $1,000, we're giving $800 in relief. And that's a lot for us, especially right now with our financial situation. I mean, I, you know, I would allow. Well, though, go what, ahead, Bob. What mitigates that would be that that you're taking, you're subtracting the uh, the average of the three previous. You know, it's it's not the whole bill, that, the whole amount that we're considering for a percentage of relief. It's after we subtract that three year three uh, bill average. And the other piece okay. for your, okay. your thing, Mr. Mayor, is that it's a once in a rolling two year period. Yeah. Two years yeah. Have, has to elapse before they can apply again. Which, and you know, we, go ahead. No, which is good. It means people should be responsible to keep up their, their plumbing. Yeah. <laughs> after they've well, got. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and I think. I, I really, you know, I, you know, hats off to Nate because I, I think this hits on all the major things that we've always either struggled with or wanted to make sure that we keep consistent, like, you know, not granting repeated relief, uh, you know, how to handle them consistently, uh, proof of repair, you know, all these things are, are incorporated. So I, I feel pretty strong about it. And because it's a policy, and not, not that I recommend this either. Um, but because it is a policy, you know, those, those percentages and stuff could be adjusted by, you know, perhaps future boards or, or something They could be either increased or decreased, um, pretty easily. But, you know, I would definitely recommend that we don't get into a game of moving the, the ratios very often. Did, did I understand you to say, Mr. Mayor, that, that the work would be done by Linda, by the clerk? And, and brought to the board just to ratify, so to speak, to approve? Yeah, I mean, we can double check with Nate, but that was my understanding. Yeah, I don't have any problem with Linda or who, you know, the clerk treasurer's office doing the calculation, but no actual forgiveness would become valid until board action. And so it's it's not like a it's not necessarily the same as a ratification of something, you know. Linda will get an application for forgiveness. She'll crunch the numbers, and then at the next board meeting, she'll present it, and it, she can certainly say to the applicant, "Here's the policy. Here's it's what's likely you are eligible for." But the board will need to formally take action to approve it before anything is finalized. I I like too that. You know, I, I like that thought too, Nate, that you just mentioned of like, you know, showing the resident the policy or, or, or giving it to them or having it be part of the application so they can, you know, understand points like this is, you know, if it's, if approved, this will be the only relief that you can receive in the next rolling two year period. So it kind of helps underscore there's some resident education kind of cooked in as well. And we, we certainly did in the policy try to make it 
clear that you know this this is subject to revision really at any time by the board. Um, and so if someone, you know, Danielle, to your point, if someone applies for forgiveness of a ten thousand dollar bill, <laughs> you might say, um, no, we're actually all right. Now we're changing the policy right now, um, right at this right. moment. And you know that's that's kind of the way that we try to preserve your out clause, if you will, for this. It'd be, I think, a very unusual case if that happened, and and you might want to actually end up forgiving it in that instance. But um, the the policy itself said subject revision at any time and at least annually by the board. And I and I think too is um, you know the board is not obligated to vote yes if there's you know, good reason, such as, you know, the, the it references proof of repair. Um, but if, if there is good reason to, you know, doubt, um, you know, that the repair is valid, or if there is, you know, a concern that this is just too much for the, the you know, the, the taxpayers in the village to bear, the, the board could, could vote no, not to approve uh, a, a relief request that's considered excessive man and my memory is jason in an email said he he really liked this policy right correct i think his exact words were it looks good to me yeah i love it i'm not even gonna lie like like i said it gives me goosebumps it's my new favorite thing government nerd <laughs> Calm down. Yeah, you have no Calm idea. Down. Like, I'm totally just like, for real, this is the best thing that's ever happened to my board meetings. <laughs> <laughs> it would greatly streamline the process. Absolutely. And I don't have to like stress about it when I look at a water bill. I just, yeah. like, and it's okay. I don't have to be a meanie. I almost said a bad word, Ryan. Look at me being good. <laughs> Go ahead, water lady. All right, so I moved to pass this water, what do we call it? <laughs> I moved from my water screen. My water sewer forgiveness policy. Yes, it's not mine, but it should be. I'm in love with it. <laughs> Second. <laughs> what the records show that Trustee Hepner is in love with this policy. I am. All right, so we have a motion, we have a second. Do we have any discussion? All right, and we'll call the vote. Bob? Yes. Danielle? Yes. I, I vote yes as well. And again, thanks, thanks, Nate, for all the background on that and helping us make that happen. Happy to help. Uh, okay, so uh, now we have some discussion, and I, we may need Nate here again in a second. So, you know, the hiring processes right now everywhere are. Um, a challenge to say the least with social distancing and all that stuff conducting interviews and and the like um but as you guys know uh jim will be retiring at the end of july and we need to uh appoint and hire his replacement our technically the title is water maintenance man you know what we've effectively called dpw superintendent for a long time um so this was online, the application was online and open and, and closed and all that. So um, Scott is actually on vacation this week, which is good for him, but I want to, to recommend to the board that we formalize that. I, I wanted to, you know, how way I envisioned this months ago was to have Scott come into a meeting before the board and have a discussion with the board uh, during a meeting such as this, but uh, you know, that that cannot happen during times like these, but um, Scott's been with us for quite a long time. Uh, he knows the village infrastructure best. Uh, I've, I've discussed the position with him. He's, he's interested in it. Uh, he wants it. I, you know, I said, pending the board's approval, I, I want to offer it to you and, and he has accepted. Um, so this is, this is what he wants career wise. I think it's best for the village to have an internal promotion, somebody who's familiar with our infrastructure and systems. And um, that's that's what we are seeking to do tonight, would be to formalize that if the board agrees with that. And then 
once that is formalized, we can move forward with assuming Scott is confirmed, uh, finding his new partner, so to speak. Um, his his test scores have not come in yet. He has taken his certification test. Um, he said he felt good about it. So, um, you know, if the board wishes, it can it can make the the appointment contingent upon satisfactory completion upon of his to be uh, certification. Might might be a wise formality to to take since we are required uh, by I don't know if it's if it's law technically but required by something to have a 2B on staff which is what Jim is so so Mira this this is Nate um, I think that technically until he has absolutely you know we know who's passed the test mm -hmm. he's technically unqualified to hold the title or the position mm -hmm. and so if, if he is if there's like a waiver or something that the i'm assuming it's the dec that's we're talking about here, yeah allows us to operate with someone who lacks the certification but has taken the test yeah then um okay that's fine then his position is uh only a temporary position yeah it's not a permanent appointment it's temporary and then once he passes the test then the board would appoint him to the permanent position at that point. Okay, so yeah, what Jim or Jim, yeah, so Scott has just so I make sure I, I said this clearly to everybody. Scott has taken the test, his score just hasn't come in. We expect it any day, and so we expect Jim, Jim will not be you know operating in his capacity for us, but Jim will still be on staff still with the active certification for the next two months two you know so well, we I mean, but, but I mean even after he retires he'll still right. be on staff with that certification so I mean legally we would still be we would still be covered but if if Scott were not to get his certification obviously that would as Nate is saying need to be addressed one way or another Okay. So I think Nate, are you are you suggesting? Um, would you suggest appoint appointing Scott? Uh, you know, contingent upon the certification or uh, a temporary appointment? How would you? Well, so I guess this kind of prompts some questions. The individual who holds the position today and is agreeing to stay on staff so that mm -hmm. way we can maintain certification does he is he formally holding the position he is formally holding the position until he retires july 31st right so until july 31st no one else can be appointed to hold the position right you know the, the position is filled until july 31st Okay. I think that you could tonight, if you wanted to take action, appoint the person you're talking about to take the position effective the very next day that we're talking about here. You know, is that okay. August 1st? August 1st. Contingent on is passing the appropriate exams and things like that. Okay. That that sounds like a reasonable way to do it and, and stay out of hot water with the civil service and stuff. Right. Is there any other discussion or question or? All, uh, all, all of this, once you guys decide, is still pending, which should happen with not a problem, the civil services approval, as I told Ryan earlier. So. I, I, I think doing the way Nate suggested. It's best. Let Scott know that we, we're eager and you know, willing to hire him. But, and it makes sense that we would hire him effective August 1st rather than 
now and having them in the wrong jab. Yeah. You know, so I, I kind of like what Nate suggested. Okay. I agree. Is that a motion by Bob and a second by Danielle? Yep, sounds good. Sure. Okay, and that, that, that's all kosher with you, Nate? Yeah, I, I think um, so. It's a motion to appoint him to the position effective July or August, whatever the date is. August 1st. Right? August 1st, contingent on his passing the exam and then also clearing whatever civil service hurdle we're talking about. Okay. Thank you. Uh, so we had a motion. We have a second. Do we have any other discussion? Oh, we'll call the vote. Bob. Yes. Danielle. Yes. And I vote yes as well. And and am I right that Jim is looking possibly to be like part time? Or yeah. After his retirement. Yeah. Just yeah. kind of staying on to not be bored. Even if Scott gets hung up in certification issues, we will still have one, a person here with that certification. Yes. While Scott tries to iron his situation out, and I, I, I don't really, I don't really expect that to happen. If he feels good about the test, yeah. I, everything else will follow. Yeah, I mean, it's just preparing for contingencies if necessary, and and I can't remember um, what Jeff's certification is. Jeff from it's our higher. sewer, but it, it it's a. Uh, he has water certifications as, as well. I just don't know which one it is offhand. So I, I, I think we're, all our bases are, are covered to at least maintain compliance. Right. Um, so thank you for that. The next bit here, as we've been discussing, uh, basically splitting the duties of our code enforcement department to, between, you know, can our existing uh, well, Linda, what was his technical title? Building, Building and Code Inspector. Okay, so that is Ken's technical title. Um, and then bringing on kind of our backup code guy now, his name's Dave Conklin. He works for the Town of Union as a, you know, we had kind of referred to it as Deputy Code Enforcement Officer. Um, you know, Linda checked with civil service in the county and they suggested the title of just just code enforcement officer for dave should be which is what his, bring right which is what his current title is with his position in the town of union which makes yes. it easier so um so basically that that's what we're we're looking to do the salary that he has well not salary hourly rate that he has requested is twenty dollars an hour and what we would, would do on how this would function is we would, you know, Ken is every, every Monday and every other Saturday. So what we would basically do is just, just literally just split it up. So Dave would take, uh, you know, one Saturday a month and one Monday a month and Ken would take the, or two, two Mondays, I'm sorry. And they would be basically splitting up their duties. So Ken would handle the permitting site plan, so on and so forth. And Dave's, Dave's specialty, how these two work together in the town of Union is basically just like this. So Ken only does permitting and site plan and stuff like that and Union and Dave is only a, uh, you know, property maintenance, property complaints. That's his specialty. And when I spoke with Dave on the phone, you know, that is, that is his specialty. That's what he's uh, most knowledgeable in. And, you know, I, I said to him that I also personally think that that is what, what we're looking for the most out of in dividing up these, these duties is to uh, step up those aspects. And that's what he is, you know, specialized in. So I, I think it would be uh, good for us. Um, I believe, so technically the county said that we would be creating a new position, right, Linda? Or no? We, for us. Right. What we have to do is we will have to create the position of co um, code, code enforcement, enforcement officer, and then he just transfers into that position. 
once so, they approve it. Nate, to create the position, uh, sorry, I should have I should have not blindsided you with this during the meeting. I should have got with you earlier, but to create a position, do we need a resolution to do that? Uh, yes, you would need a resolution and then preferably also the job duties statement. Okay. I have I have the job sound like civil service has. I have the job duty statements already. But we need to work up a resolution. Right. Well, I think the resolution to create the position would be a motion to create the position of insert title with the uh, job duties description as attached, you know, and that's the uh, form that Linda has already. With annual okay. appointment? Uh, yeah, how are we doing the current we, code guy? He annual. just was hired in never annual, and we discussed this at one of the last meetings to make it an annual appointment. I think he was yeah. appointed on my birthday in 1987. <laughs> <laughs> so it has not been reconfirmed since. So uh, I, I do think it's likely to be an annual position. Code enforcement officers are um, officers. You know, they they do hold the ability. They hold authority is the the shorthand for it. Now they're they're not just employees. They exercise discretion. They don't just go out and do whatever the mayor tells them to do. For example, they exercise independent discretion to determine whether something is in fact a violation or not, and they have authority to sign documents and legal proceedings. You know, they issue notices that begin actions. And so um, I think an annual appointment is appropriate. Now it, it does mean that letting someone go becomes harder because as an officer, arguably they would have public officer protections. You know, they can only be removed for cause. And that's where um, some places have only one code enforcement officer and then everyone else who works for that person is a deputy and they only fill things out for kind of the code enforcement officer's approval and so i think what you're talking about is creating kind of a a position to hold some authority but i i haven't seen the job duty statement and you know that's possibly a conversation to have but i think what you're what you're trying to do is create a, a new position and then appoint this gentleman to fill it. And Dave, if you're listening to this, you better do what the mayor tells you to do. So Nate just said he doesn't just do what the mayor tells him to do. So <laughs> I'm making a joke, joke for myself there. I don't care if anybody else thinks it's funny. Um, so Nate, would you be comfortable with us passing the resolution that you just uh, ad-libbed? Yeah, again, it's just as simple as a motion to create the position of insert job title with the job duties as described in the job duties description statement. Okay. Thank you, sir. Um, how, does, how does the board feel? Are you, do you feel prepared to, to implement this? Or do you have any points for discussion or questions or I mean I feel like it's pretty well I don't know. You're quiet, Danielle. Can you hear her, Linda? Barely. You still with us, Danielle? Yeah. She's unmuted. Nate, I just sent that to you. Thanks. Yep. Oh, well, a lot of searching to hook back up. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm okay with acting on this. I, I think we have discussed this as the way we, we have thought about going. But there's a part of me that's still a little reluctant to do it with with three people, and now maybe two and a half or <laughs> well, we, uh, Danielle can't vote, then we can't pass it anyway. <laughs> I know. Okay, so, but it's not. I'm not that I'm opposed to the action. It's just 
this when we I have to hear, but I feel the same way about it. I feel like the other two should be here to say how they feel about the whole situation. We can table it. it it's not as it's not as uh, time sensitive as as uh, you know Jim's current position and getting that lined up so we can line up. You know, Scott. If Scott moves into it, we need to work on filling Scott's position. So the code enforcement position can can wait. It's not a time sensitive thing. So we'll table it for now. Sound good? That way Nate can also work up the formal resolution that way we're covered. Please and thank you. Sounds good. Okay. Okay. Uh, that brings us to uh, an approval. Linda needs approval to pay the last fire truck bond payment. Last actually is here. The final fire truck payment is here. Uh, she just, It becomes due before our first meeting of the new fiscal year, so she needs approval to, to pay it. We always do this every year. So It's in the total amount of $45,713.72 with interest. I'll move it. Second. We have a motion. We have a second. We have any discussion? Then we will call the vote. Bob? Yes. Danielle? Yes. I vote yes as well. Uh, the next one is the exact same premise, except this is the first payment for the public works garage bond. Um, so that it's the same situation. Linda needs authorization to, to pay it early. So that is in the amount of $8,322. Much smaller. Your turn, Dave. <laughs> second. <laughs> We have a motion. We have a second. Do we have any discussion? We'll call a vote. Bob? Yes. Danielle? Yes. Thank you. Oh, I vote yes as well. Thank you. Uh, the last approval is for the vehicle maintenance bid that we bids that we opened last meeting. We received bids from Priority and Jerome. Priority was the uh, assumed low bidder. I spoke with Chief Walters about this. You know, priority is viewed very well by our department, by our, this chief, by the last chief. We're very happy with their services. They were the you know presumed low bidder. So his recommendation and my recommendation is to approve priority and continue with that line of service. Move it. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Sorry, my phone. <laughs> That's okay. Any discussion? We will call a vote. Bob? Yes. Danielle? Yes. I vote yes as well. That brings us to old and new business. I have a few things to mention here. Uh, the new, uh, new proposed fire protection contract with the town of Barker has been sent along with a, a letter that hits upon all the points of discussion that we discussed during our our last meeting. Um, we received a notice of inspection of our water system from the Broome County Health Department. There were no significant deficiencies observed, which is always good to hear. There's a list of, you know, some recommended maintenance and such on this list here, annual thing. No significant deficiencies is, is great. Um, there was a card sent to the board. These are always nice from residents who appreciate the water relief that they perceive. So it's always nice to know that you're appreciated. So I just figured we would share that. When you first proud release somebody else gave. Thanks, guys. It was blank. It was blank. <laughs> when you first opened the card, it was blank. The blank yeah. was not, that was but I'm glad to see there was actual writing in there. There was, yeah. I just didn't know if I wanted to show like all the actual writing for the camera. Somebody somewhere is gonna like zoom in on it and now like, you know, uh, <laughs> tweet it or something and then Lord knows what'll happen. Um, I have two- Everything will break loose. What's that? It's all gonna break loose when that when that letter gets out. That card, yeah. That, yeah. That makes you uh, that's the old business that I have. Does anybody else have old business? 
I can't tell if Danielle's shaking her head no because it's a still picture. So. I don't. Sorry. <laughs> okay, no, it's okay. I'm literally making dinner. <laughs> That's okay. I understand. Uh, new business. I have just a couple quick things. Um, so, you know, we've been moving forward with the small business micro enterprise grant with Toma. They have issued some uh, programming. We've shared it on the Village Facebook page. Uh, I've submitted it to the agency, our IDA. Uh, we've shared it on pretty much all the social media that we can, but it's just sharing it with you guys and publicly during the meeting. If you know a, a micro enterprise business, so that's five employees or fewer who may be interested, or somebody who's in the early stages of starting a business or wanting to start a business, let them know that we have this program and to contact Toma. Uh, as of my last communication with them, six parties had reached out and expressed interest. One had formally submitted uh, an application. So that's where we stand on that. The more interest we get, the like all programs, the, the better chance of it becoming a successful grant application. So if there's anybody that you know, please, please spread the word. And if you're watching this and you know it sounds intriguing, please reach out to Toma or, or myself and we can get you headed in the right direction. Uh, and then the last thing, just a heads up, we will probably have a site plan uh, review next meeting for, uh, what's the technical term of the, uh, the Baker property, Linda? You, what's the name of? AB Construction. AB Construction, that's, that's, that's it. Uh, so that will probably be next meeting. I just want to contact Dan to, um, you know, if it's an in-person meeting, he may he may want to be there. So we've heard back from the county on that, from the 239 review or whatever reviews they, they did on it so we can move forward with our part. So the, the location is still TBA at this point. I'll let you know before that time as to where the meeting is going to be. Yeah, depending on the governor's right order expiration thereof or so does anybody else have new business <laughs> <laughs> i want to make a i want to make a gif of bob saying no right there <laughs> so, anything danielle or linda or nate nope nothing here okay well, Jason and Bob, we miss you. We'll see you in a couple of weeks. Not Bob, Jason and Mike. Yeah, sorry. We miss you we too, miss Bob. You too, Bob. Yeah, we, we always miss Bob. What am I, chop liver? <laughs> I miss you too, Linda. No, I'm Bandy. talking about Bob. <laughs> All right. If nothing else then, then this meeting's adjourned. Thank you. Thank Bye, you. guys. Have a good night. You too. Bye, y'all.